What is the most disrespectful thing you've seen at a memorial funeral? My aunt arriving late to the removal and requesting the coffin to be reopened, to see my mum, because she couldn't be asked to turn up in time, while her two sisters who live 4 hours away had no issues with time. To top it off, we had selected people mum was close to to do some readings, and my aunt sent up one of her daughters who took over a reading from one of my mum's good friends, who had felt honoured that we selected him. Meaning he just got to stand there uselessly as there was nothing left to read. My aunt also decided she wanted to have the spotlight so sang a song. Terribly. Up at the front without getting the okay from us in advance. I won't be going to her funeral. What a selfish person. This wasn't at the funeral. But I had a cousin do the following during the weekend of my grandfather's funeral. 1. Went into his house. Put sticky notes on all the things she and her husband wanted. 2. Asked her mom and uncles to give her the house. More than once. 3. Spent a ton of time trying to sell her Etsy crap. Crappily crocheted scarves and mittens. To all the relatives who were in town for the funeral. 4. Showed up an hour late to the lunch after the memorial service and then acted pee that nobody had saved seats for her and her husband. 5. At the memorial lunch. She had volunteered to give a small talk about our grandfather. I wasn't close with him but it was a super offensive speech and she clearly hadn't prepared. She spent the whole time before and after talking about how her speech was really good because she had done debate in high school. She graduated high school probably 25 years ago. So yeah, awkward weekend. When my great grandmother died, my great uncle Sidney, her son didn't turn up to the funeral. The rest of the family came back to the house to find it completely stripped by workers from his auction house. No member of the family ever saw him again. My stepfather was married to my mum for 18 years. At his funeral his ex-wife pushed my mum back into her seat so she could follow his coffin out of the church. Traditionally the widow does this. As if that wasn't bad enough. When the coffin was being lowered into the grave, it had been raining all morning so the graveside was just mud. She, the ex-wife, was kneeling in the mud wailing, loudly, the whole time. She was wearing what I can only describe as a long black satin night dress. It was embarrassing and horrifying at the same time. My poor mother a mess the whole time. My stepfather had drowned so it was all very sudden, and just stood there not knowing what to do. Once again a person who probably just wanted attention or something. I mean you could mourn with the real widow, or you could be a bee. Buddy of mine was a serviceman. He got killed in action. The media and the paps tried to force a way into the cathedral where the service was held. There was a strict no cameras rule inside by family request. They didn't care. They just wanted a great shot. They then followed us to the crematorium where the family and friend service was held. That's when things got ugly. They got aggressive about trying to get pictures of the grieving mother and sisters. A few of my mates lost it. A camera guy got a pretty good kicking. He deserved it. Gosh I can't imagine. They deserved the kicking. Friend of mine's father died. At the funeral his girlfriend decided it was a good time to discuss all the problems she had with their relationship. I was right there when he said I'm burying my father. You need to leave. They broke up a few days later. Westboro Baptist Church protested at my cousin's funeral. He was 7 when he died. I don't know what they were trying to accomplish or how they live with themselves. My mom's boyfriend died recently. He was an atheist. But the rest of his family are fundamental Baptists. His brother stood up to give the eulogy and said I fully believe in my heart. Mom's boyfriend is now in heck. This was on top of all the gospel music, sermon, etc at the memorial. I went to a funeral like this. The deceased had committed suicide and the priest essentially used the service as an opportunity to tell people about what happened if you killed yourself. That you'd go to heck. I felt so sorry for the man's wife family members stealing items. At my mother wake, my deadbeat father was stealing photos off of the collage we, my mother's side of family, made to take to family court to show he was there. At my father-in-law's wake, NYPD detective, his daughters from first marriage stole his police hat before they closed the casket and argument broke out at the cemetery between Mill, Sill, and stepdaughters. This seems to be common. When my step-grandmother passed away it wasn't even a day after and their family was at her house taking what they wanted before the will could be read. 
I went to a friend's funeral a few years back. This guy was very loved by men it. He ran a biker bar and was the chaplain at a prison. He was also a really small guy. Well, as the service was ending, I looked up towards the pulpit as the preacher was saying a few kind words. I saw my buddy's biker's for Jesus vest, his tiny little vest, above his tiny little boots. I couldn't contain my laughter. My friend's family bore holes through me with fire glares. I skipped the after party at the bar. I'm sure your friend would have gotten a good laugh out of that story. My wife died in May of this year. 2016 is truly in butthole. She had battled stage IV breast cancer for 3 years and I had given up a 6 figure job to stay home and care for her. My wife grew up in California and we lived in Minnesota. So her family was not around and didn't see how hard she was fighting. I attended every appointment. Changed wound dressings for a wound vac. I hope I never have to do that again. And administered medicine. In that process we went through all of our savings. Retirement. And had to declare bankruptcy. I don't say that for sympathy or to get kudos. She was worth every minute. Every dollar. Every sacrifice. My wife was from California and we lived in Minnesota and when she passed it was her wish to have services in both states. At my wife's funeral in California, I was meeting with the priest immediately before the service and I then walk out to the front of the church to take my seat. I get there only to find that my wife's parents and family did not keep a space to sit for me and my parents in the front family pew. In fact, they were shocked that I wanted to sit in the family section at all. I didn't say a word and sat across the aisle in our own pew also in the front. Fun day. They clearly don't know the meaning of family. Your wife was blessed to have spent her life with you. I am sorry for your loss. My older sister killed herself 5 years ago. At her memorial the day before the funeral, the man she was married to, I refused to consider him my brother-in-law part of my family, showed up an hour and a half late with his brothers laughing and acting like they were rolling up to the bar to watch a game or something. Two family members, regarded by everyone else as being really trashy, arguing over who got the car. A lot of people were included in the will, but my grandfather, dad side had purchased a fairly flashy car shortly before he passed away, and at the funeral, two distant family members had to be separated by the rest of us because they were arguing over who would get grandpa's new white Lincoln to Lincoln to Lincoln. Seriously, the deceased's money and material possessions have no place being discussed at their own funeral. You can handle shutting the frick up and respecting the dead for a couple hours. Background. My uncle and his brother were raised by their father and stepmother. Their biological mother has been out of the picture, not having seen her since they were young children. They both consider their stepmother to be their mother, and she absolutely loved them. Mother-son dance at their weddings, all that. However, my uncle's father is not her first marriage. She had been married before and had children from that marriage. Her birth children are adults and out of the house when she marries my uncle's father. So they are my uncle's step siblings. At the end of their lives, my uncle's father was suffering from stage 4 cancer and his stepmother has developed dementia. She is no longer able to care for her husband. Her biological children take her in and forbid my uncle and his brother from seeing her. My uncle's father dies 6 months later. The disrespect. Two years after his father dies, my uncle receives a call from an old family friend. She gives him her condolences about his stepmother dying. That's right, my uncle's stepmother, who he considers to be his real mom because she raised him has died and his step-siblings did not tell him. When he called his stepsister to ask about when the memorial service would be he is told her, it's already come and gone and be. He and his brother have no right to be upset. After all that wasn't their real mom. That's not the worst part. A different family friend has a copy of the program from the memorial service. It summarizes my uncle's stepmother's life and has pictures of her. The program does not mention her marriage to my uncle's father and the role she played in raising my uncle and his brother. That's not the worst part. When my uncle's stepmother died, she was living states away with her biological children. However, she had spent 30 plus years living in the state my uncle and his father had lived in, so there many friends and family members who wanted to pay their respects. So, my uncle held a memorial service. About 80 people attended and it was very moving. 
Days later my uncle receives a call from one of his step-siblings. They heard about the memorial service he threw and tells him he had no right to do so because she wasn't his real mom. Man frick those people. The biological kids. See. The lot of them. I went to a funeral where his wife sung arms of an angel, where she taped it and posted it on YouTube. She wants to be a singer. Link PLS. During my aunt's funeral they were too cheap to just pirate some music and burn it to a CD. They had created a YouTube playlist of all the songs that were requested. During the service there was an ad for Glade plugins that began with a line like tired of something stinking up the room yo and I have hardly laughed harder in my life. A family member died and his ex-wife, who had been out of the picture for roughly 30 years, decided to show up and stay at the wake for 3 hours while making a huge scene. The funeral home won't let me view the guest message book from my mom's funeral unless I pay $85.75 which is something I can't afford at the moment. If you PM me the details I can contact them and pay on your behalf. Those comments belong with you. My grandfather passed away from lung cancer and we held a celebration of life at a local function hall. My cousin's boyfriend is very vocal about his opinions, and was openly and loudly complaining that it should be a human right to be able to smoke cigarettes inside. I'm not sure what being liberal has to do with smoking indoors, but cousin's BF is a tool. In the past year I've lost three relatives. Went to three funerals. My brother's trashy but girlfriend has been to all of them along with her plethora of children that she doesn't know how to raise. At every single funeral she cussed out her children. Loud as freak. I hate this woman. The next funeral of a family member of mine she attends. I'm going to walk right up to her car and tell her no one wants her here and that she needs to freaking leave. I am not going to put up with her bulls anymore. I'll leave out the cuss words. Of course, but I'm sure she will cause a scene. I will talk to the funeral director prior and ask him to accompany me in escorting her butt out of there. Not me, but my brother did a class foreign exchange program where they spent two months in Germany. One of the things they did was visit a holocaust museum. One of his classmates spent the entire time looking bored and playing with her lighter, in the section covering the cremations. On my exchange trip to Germany, we visited Buchenwald concentration camp. After we had pulled up, while the teachers were regrouping arranging everyone's tickets preparing to let us inside, a couple of the Dudebris in the group decided to play her kissack and compete trying to climb the light posts in the parking area where we were all waiting. Uncle Charlie was a hard drinking man. He was considered the black sheep of our family, and every year for several years one of my older cousins would have to drive around the small rural southern county where we lived, in order to find him and bring him to the Christmas dinner. I don't think he ever set foot in a church. After a major stroke in his 70s, he had a series of other medical setbacks and finally died of complications. At his funeral, a local Baptist preacher stood in the cemetery and prattled on about visiting brother Charlie and witnessing him accepting Jesus and crying about not wanting to go to heck. It was so much sickening hogwash I wanted to just publicly and loudly call bulls on everything he said. No one who knew Charlie believed a word of it. The only reason I didn't was fear of humiliating his two elderly sisters in attendance. Last year I confessed what I wished I had done at that service, and my remaining aunt laughed and said she would have loved it if I had. When my aunt passed away, the preacher at her funeral did the exact same thing. Talking about how she came to him a couple days prior and gave her life to Jesus. My dad and I knew this was not true because she was a Wiccan. And talked to her recently enough to know that was not a life change she made. It makes me so angry when people lie to fill their personal agendas. I'm late to the party. But, I was at the funeral of a friend who had died due to a HOD. His H dealer showed up to the service. Half of us were P, and the other half was buying from him and shooting in the parking lot bathroom of the wake. Freaking awful, mate. I wish someone had him removed for you. I was at my wonderful, super awesome, best grandma ever's funeral. It was in a little church in the southern US. Everything was great. There were flowers everywhere. People had come from all over. Pictures of her were beautiful. My aunt and uncle are Baptists and they hired a young preacher to do the eulogy. At first, 
he was doing okay talking about how awesome grandma was. Then he started to criticize how our family had become divided and completely forgot it was a funeral service. He said and I quote, Muhammad, Buddha, Hindu they can't save you from heck. The only one who can is Jesus Christ and he's in the Bible. He was yelling and basically frothing at the mouth. I knew he was a zealot, but I really did not expect him to hijack my grandmother's funeral and turn it into a sermon. I gave him my copy of Living Buddha, Living Christ by Thich Nhat Hanh afterwards. That crap's more common than not here here in the south. Part time funeral home worker here. Once we had a family come in, this guy died, let's say his name is Jim. Well, Jim was married to his lovely wife Jane and, known to everyone, had a piece on the side who we'll call Nancy. So the family knew, the wife knew, everyone knew about Nancy, and to kick it off, the family liked Nancy better. So in the obituary, they freaking mention both Jane, as his wife, and Nancy, as his partner. Visitation day rolls around, and Jean and the immediate family show up first. See, the wife ordered the flowers through us and on this day, the flower shop decided to screw us and not send the flowers in time. But Nancy had ordered hers separate, so of course hers show up on time. And you know what she ordered? Two huge red hearts made of roses with a banner that said soulmates. Jim's parents insisted we put her flowers right beside the coffin. And lord when the wife walked in she was furious. And to make it worse, the way visitations work is say it's from 2pm to 4pm. Family arrives for 1pm so they have an hour alone, and we only let immediate family through. Well, Nancy rolls in crying her eyes out with her best friend holding her, and Jane. Well, she's pee now. What do the parents do? Come on it. They let Nancy and her friend come in during the immediate family hour instead of telling her to wait till the viewing was open to the public. Like. 20 minutes later the best friend and the wife almost dropped the gloves, plus Jim's brother showed up drunk, the flowers never arrived, and the cousins decided to tailgate the viewing and smoke a bowl outside the funeral home, it was a disaster all around. I was at the funeral service of a childhood friend who died of a H overdose, I sat next to the mother of another childhood friend of mine, she was always very proper and religious. She spent half of the service bad mouthing the mother saying if she had raised her son right, he would be still alive. I get it, the guy shouldn't have done H. He made some bad decisions in his life, but there's no reason to slam his mother at her son's funeral. But to make matters worse, she was now the only remaining member of her household. Her husband had died less than a year earlier and her only other child had died in his teens. I felt so sorry for her. It does not compare to the Westboro people, but my friend's ex showed up at a mutual friend service and brought her large dog to the graveside service at Cave Hill. It pee on the coffin. So, this regular where I work had his best friend die a day before his own baby shower. A week later, he comes in and lets me know that the dude was separated and had a girlfriend on the side, but the woman knew about each other, so it was fine. But he apparently had another girlfriend which neither knew about, and that did not go well. This new girlfriend attended, and was asking things like, Oh did you bury him in his favorite underwear and was demanding some of his things. Sounded nuts. My husband's dad died when he was two. His uncles got up from the service and slithered out. They went to their house and broke into their garage and took all of their dad's tools and chests with a bunch of antiques. My great uncle Sid cleaned out his parents house during his mother's funeral. No one ever saw him again after that. My grandfather died last month. The memorial service was small, but it was a big deal to the family. My parents flew in from California, my uncle's family from the Midwest, and my relatives from Sweden. We all tried to dress respectfully. My mom, sister, and I all wore formal black dresses. Some poor guy in the elevator tried to be friendly with well you're dressed awfully nice for a Saturday morning, got so embarrassed, and most people wore, if not black, at least something somber. My uncle wore his Air Force medals, my Swedish aunt was wearing a very sweet black and white checkered dress, etc. My step cousin's wife showed up in a pink t-shirt, Jean shorts, and flip flops. She then decided to stand in the line of family members shaking hands with the guests and meeting my grandfather's friends. We tried very hard not to judge, since she and my cousin are not well off and she has several children. But dang was it hard. As my mom pointed out, 
she must own other shoes for work, and it's not like dresses are more expensive than jeans at Walmart. Turns out my mom was right, and our internal bitching was vindicated when two weeks later she showed up to my grandmother's 80th birthday. It turns out, she does own a black dress, and heels. I used to do funeral honors detail for the navy, and I worked a funeral of a fallen active duty sailor where the Westboro Baptist Church showed up. Fortunately the Patriot Guard riders also showed up in force and made a wall of flags to shield the family from the protest. Other than that, I'd say proselytizing at a funeral is about the tackiest thing I've ever seen. Especially so when they are trying to convert the goddamn honor guard. I was adopted because of my grandma. When my grandma had Alzheimer I used to visit her every Wednesday on my off days until day she passed away. This was when I was 17 23 years old. At the time I didn't get along with my little sister. So my little sister told my mom if I go she will not attend. My mom told me not to attend the funeral. Now I visit my grandma's grave on my off days to make sure she has fresh flowers. And none of my family knows this. They don't know who's putting the flowers. Sorry about my bad English. It is not my first language. I am so sorry you were treated so callously. My cousin spent his time up at that podium talking about the consequences of not being a good Christian. It was my grandpa's funeral. Relevant grandpa background. He died of massive organ failure caused by the effects of his gambling addiction. Relevant cousin background. He was a rheum addict. Thankfully he got clean. Unfortunately the path there involved in becoming a religious zealot. I'm not sure I'd this was disrespectful or not. I used to do veterans funerals. You know. Fold the flag. Play taps. Present the flag to the next of kin. Well. We got the call one day extremely late. We usually knew a day or two ahead if there was a funeral. This day. We got the call two hours before the funeral. The funeral was 2.5 hours away. We rushed as fast as we could. So, we get to the service late. We go in, embarrassed and ready to apologize. This family was the happiest family I've ever seen. The next of kin, the veteran's daughter who looked to be in her 80s, told us we were too early because she had to go to the bathroom. She asked us to wait on her. We did. She took about 45 minutes to do whatever she needed to do. We're not supposed to mingle with families, but we didn't have a choice in this situation. It was indoors and the veteran was cremated, so there wasn't a cemetery we could hide in. The whole time we were waiting, the family showed absolutely no emotion towards the departed. They were like kids in a candy store asking us about our military service. Also, at another funeral, the family was gathered approximately 7 inches away from us while folding the flag. I heard countless camera shutters. I was so nervous. All I could think was don't frick up, don't frick up. Don't frick up because I was afraid 50,000 pictures of me fricking up would be all over Facebook within an hour. If the veteran's daughter was in her 80s, I think it's safe to say that the family knew his time would come and they had already made peace. Seems normal enough. My best friend hung himself in the backyard shed when we 17. His parents were overseas and older brother and sister had moved out, eventually found by older sister 4 days later. At the funeral some lud but be remarked to me that at least it wasn't summertime. 4 days, could you imagine the frickin' smell I wanted to slap that bee but was so shocked and too numb to do anything. A couple of years ago a somewhat, but not so much, distant relative passed away. There was some family drama going on between two of my uncles at the time. They got into a fist fight in the room the wake was being held. After my grandfather's wife's funeral, her family threw a tailgate and a half full can of beer had to be removed from her hand in the casket. The police arrived at the scene due to noise complaints. It should be noted that this was my grandfather's second wife. Not related to me and disliked by most of my family, as she started out as my grandfather's mistress. A friend of mine who was pretty popular with the ladies had passed away from a drug overdose, and I was pretty surprised at the amount of girls dressed up like they were going to a club show up at his funeral. I'm talking tight little black dresses, frick me pumps, full on Kardashian style makeup with the smoky eyeshadow and the big lips, hair all done. Just didn't seem like the right time or place for it, and I doubted he'd give a crap from his coffin, you know? My grandmother's funeral a few years back, 
The rather large procession was entering into the graveyard through a narrowish gate. A friend who came with me for support turned around and said quite loudly Jesus Christ people are just dying to get in here. I don't think it was vindictive but I do still find his unusual wit funny to this day. When I was a senior, both of my grandparents on my father's side had passed away within two days of each other. I'm not close to my dad in the slightest, mainly because of him being addicted to drugs and his girlfriend being completely insane. My mother had attended the first viewing with me, only to shortly be pulled aside and asked to leave. When asked about why, my father and his girlfriend came over and began screaming at us, saying it was wrong of her to say she used to date him, she had no business being there, etc. My mother left of course, but as soon as she did they continued to attack me and then were told to leave. Never in my life did I expect to pay my final respects like that or even imagine how low people can act. I'm not sure if others agree, since it's weird not to do this in a picture, but I really don't think smiling is appropriate when taking pictures at the 9-11 memorial. I agree. I went to see Pompeii and everyone was taking smiling pictures next to the body casts and it made me uncomfortable. My cousin taking over the speaking portion of the service to rant about drug use and cops killing black and native people and how black lives matter needs all our help. It was my grandma's funeral and she was definitely not shot by the cops. Then taking off his shirt and storming around the church yelling more about black lives matter camps and protests, then screaming at the newly arrived police while waving a bowie knife, getting bean bagged, charging through the church with the knife, then getting tased, then ranting for 15 minutes until Ems showed up about how he didn't understand why the police didn't kill him, because that's what they do. They just want to kill all the minorities so why didn't they shoot him? I don't think he's the most stable of people. Kind of ruined everyone's funeral though. Just, wow. Not really my story to tell but a friend of a friend of mine's father was murdered he apparently owned a lot of land and was a very successful businessman. The son was 19 I think and on the funeral a drunk came and started telling him he had to show up to his father's company tomorrow and that from now on he was in charge of running the whole business and that there was no time for crying. All this while the poor guy was bawling his eyes out. A few weeks after the Iraq war, some teenage French Muslims spray painted swastikas, Bush Blair equals Hitler, and, if that wasn't bad enough the words dig up your rubbish, it's fouling our soil on the entrances to a French graveyard for us UK troops who died liberating France during World War II. Ironically, it was soon discovered that the graveyard these vermin defaced was the resting place for Canadian soldiers who died during World War II. Canada was staunchly against the Iraq war, either way, some people have no respect for the living or the dead. At my husband's grandfather's funeral, his aunt passed around a coffee can to collect money to pay for the obituary in the paper. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.